Hey folks, it's Harry from Celebrate Daddy Barbecue. I have been receiving lots and lots of questions from the uh, six YouTube videos I posted already on cooking competition chicken. In this episode, which I will call the ultimate competition chicken, I'm going to combine all of the tips and tricks I showed you guys in the previous videos into one video. Uh, stay tuned, you guys. I'm going to take you through a kind of a long video to take you through every step of competition chicken prep, competition chicken cook, and competition chicken presentation so that you too can up your game. And always remember, as Harry up his game, he's gonna up your game. scissors and I've got my Foster Farms chicken from Costco so I'm ready to trim ready to rock and roll I'm taking the chicken out of the bag here and the one thing you never want to do is you never want to do this at the sink this uh, liquid here is called the purge it's got a lot of pathogens so I'll leave the link in the show more so that you can read the scientific article as to why you never wash chicken in the sink as I'm taking out the pieces of chicken I'm inspecting it making sure that the pieces are good and uh, making sure that the skin is intact. I'm looking for chicken that has nice skin with no blemishes. Lining them up now so I can select enough pieces for me to use and trim. I've unpacked the package of Foster's chicken thighs I bought from Costco. And as I lay it all out, there is about uh, 17 pieces here. I'm gonna cook nine pieces in a pan. And I'm going to show you how I select them. So I kind of cull the ones that are not usable. This one is uh, kind of have a broken skin. Can do that. This one is too small. This one a little bit too small in size. These are the good ones I have here. So I have about 15 here. So I'm going to show you guys how we trim and then we scrape and then we jacquard. So here's the chicken. Make sure the chicken has no blemishes. Skin is nice and clear, and uh, no bumps, no scratches, no cuts, and uh, no feathers sticking out. So what you do is going to trim it to shape, make a little rectangle like so. Trim this edge off. Square off the skin. See this line here? I'm gonna scrape it to trim off the knuckle bone here. Scratch the skin back. The skin is nicely trimmed. So next thing you want to do now is scrape the skin. Spread it out. So this is how uh, the chicken fat looks like. So this is the collagen underneath the skin. If you get it all off, then the skin is going to be easier to make tender. All right. Fat here. This one's the leading edge fat. Chicken's ready to go. Now this chicken is kind of sitting quite low, so I won't bother trimming up the oyster. So the oyster is this little triangular piece of meat here. Uh, I'm also not gonna I'm not gonna try to pull the veins out. Just take too much time because I've never had a problem with the veins. But I showed you the technique of how to get using a tool called a mosquito forceps. Go in here and get the vein out. Drape the chicken skin back on like so. So here it is. Pick up the jacquard. Jacquard is a, a tool that has like making 
tiny little holes in the skin using this tool like so and that will allow the skin to perforate like a bounty towel in case uh, I'm not able to get the skin tender. So first piece done and uh, now I need to do another eight of these to fill one tray so I'm gonna go off camera and do that and come back when all the chicken has been prepped. I want to show you a little detail about how the fat is trimmed because uh, I was trimming a little bit fast and you may not have seen my finger action here but basically the way you scrape off the fat on the skin is by using a boning knife like this then you don't try to push it straight what you do is you make a slicing action so my action relative to the square of the chicken I'm going this way okay so let's take that and working my way around so with the slicing action you're actually shaving off the fat and the fat comes off a lot easier. You see that? So just no, there's no problem there. See, so the fat comes off very easily when you do a 45 degree slicing angle like so. I just want to be clear because it may seem like I'm pushing, but I'm not. I'm actually pushing and sliding, pushing and sliding like this. So one more time, I'll show it to you. See, I'm actually making a slicing cut like this, like a samurai sword like that, right? With medium pressure and then the uh, fat comes up. So I hope these detailed steps will kind of alleviate your fear of the devil meat. It's not that hard whether you want to chuck hard. You don't want to chuck hard, you want to scrape, you don't want to scrape, you want to use meat glue. It's really not that big of a deal. You know, if I can win first place USA, you know, you definitely can.
and uh, we're gonna apply the rub next. The question I always get is, uh, do I apply the rub underneath the skin? No, you don't need to. It works just as you know. It works really well on top. There's two sides to the chicken skin, so just try to remember that the bump, bumpy side is on the top. So you can put the bumpy side. Alright, uh, now the skin is nicely stretched with its side. Start seasoning on the back side. So we did a, essentially an injection, which is a chicken soak, which is the wet brine. Now we're going to switch techniques now. We're going to do a dry brine for a few minutes here. And then how long depends on the rub you're using and how salty you want your chicken to be. Um, for competition, typically chicken, we, we cook it a little bit salty. You know, that's what brings out the flavor in food. And uh, for home use, don't let it sit for too long. I have my chicken wrap first place USA. Uh, many teams have used this to win first place, including uh, Doug Shiding from Road Cookers. He won the Houston Livestock and Rodeo World Championship using just one product. So wrap, go check it out if you want. The link is in the uh, show more. All right, so let's show you guys how we apply the wrap. So the uh, wrap has to be applied uh, very evenly. First, you shake the wrap to make it loose first. And then if my rub comes up, just break it up with a fork. Depending on your humidity in your, in your region, it may come up. Just a medium coat on the back part here. Shake it, apply some. Shake it, apply some. And remember, our contest is won or lost with one too many shakes of rub or one missing shake of rub, right? So when you apply the rub, make sure you apply it carefully and consistently. And basic things like the lighting, even the lighting of the parking lot you're in will fool your sense of sight at night. So if you're cooking in a sodium filled parking lot, make sure that you shine a white flashlight onto your chicken so that you don't end up over seasoning or under seasoning the, the chicken because the light can cast a false glow. I used to have an orange tent and uh, I found out that the orange tent caused me problems because the orange glow on my tent sometimes cause me to over season or under season my chicken. So there you go. Now we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over. I usually wait for about 30 minutes before I do the flip. I'm just gonna do it. So flip it over, stretch it out. Uh, in a contest I'll do about maybe 16 thighs or 18 so nine, nine in a tray or eight in a tray, kind of depending on my mood here. So since this is a test cook, I'm just gonna do a standard pan, which is one pan of nine. All right, so if we stretched out the chicken, now we're ready to apply the rub. And here's where it's very important to apply it nice and even. Look high up here. You don't overdo it. Remember Harry said less is more, so you don't wanna overdo it. So there's more that you apply on the meat side, less on the skin side, okay? Very important, the amount, because I've calibrated this rub to win contest, so you just follow exactly what you see here, and you'll be fine. Chicken is nicely seasoned, fairly even. That's how it should be. All right, chicken is seasoned, and I'm gonna now arrange it in a pan. So typically, here's another black belt tip. So if I have any bigger pieces or smaller pieces, the bigger pieces goes on the edge of the pan, and then the smaller pieces go in the middle to protect it. So like for example, in this case here, I've got this piece that's kind of small, so I'll position it right in the middle of the pan like so. Okay, and uh, this piece is bigger. I will position the bigger piece in the corner. So this one is another big piece. Puts in the corner. This one is a medium piece, goes here. This bigger piece goes here. I'm gonna use two hands to do this here. All right. Try not to mess up the skin when you do this. So there you have it, chicken all ready to go into the pit now. The dry brine stage is up to you. You have to experiment with your brand of chicken and the rub that you're using to see what is the optimum dry brine period. 
we did both a wet brine and a dry brine so the advantage of the dry brine is that it doesn't penetrate the flavor so much the advantage is it maintains the springiness of the chicken a wet brine sometimes tends to make it mushy but i'm showing you both techniques you can use both techniques or you can use one technique it's really up to you so don't, don't sweat the small stuff all right so we're going to put this now uh, i'm going to cook it in the pan today now people always ask me harry uh, do you put butter yes you can put butter you can put parquet but for today I, i'm just going to leave it as this i just want to have a natural chicken flavor I'm going to use the Green Mountain. It's uh, running at around 275 degrees. So we're going to put it in the Green Mountain now. All right, the meat is in the Green Mountain, ready to get crusty. Or take another 50 minutes to an hour to get crusty, depending on the pit and the airflow. I like to use apple, hickory, or cherry. Uh, today, we are using uh, some cherry pellets. These are from Kingsford. Thank you, Kingsford, for sending me some cherry to try. I'll see how it flavors the chicken today using cherry wood pellets. All right, it's been a few minutes now. The chicken is crusting, and I'm gonna spray it with some, I can't believe it's not butter. You can use parquet, but I prefer this product. I think it tastes better. In a few minutes and the crust is setting. Keep the temperature here. 49, 65, 170. Okay, so the crust has set and uh, I spritz it with some butter flavor spray. And we can go ahead and wrap it now and move to phase two, which is the foil phase. Take one out to taste. All right, looking good. It's about about 196. And take a look at some of these. 193. 90, 203. 198. Well, 200. So these are all done. And we can do a taste test on the skin and it should be perfectly good. All right, it's cooled down a little bit. Temperature is uh, cooled down to about 141. I'm gonna take a bite now, Let's see how it tastes like. The skin is perfectly bite too. The skin's not pulling off. Absolutely perfect. So now we're gonna trim the rest of the chicken. My sauce here. Let's see if we get some pieces that I like. The idea is that uh, when you trim it at the end, you only need to trim six pieces, so it's heck a lot easier than trying to trim, perfectly trim the whole batch of chicken thighs. I'll just save it until the end. Let's see here, I like this one. So this is where you kind of play Jenga, and some pieces are a little bit irregular, so you just need to trim yourself to get six pieces. The secret is uh, trim it after you're done cooking. So you can trim it the size. I got my sauce here. Another black belt trick I want to show you is the my sauce is cold. I like to put cold sauce on chicken. That way, it really kind of like blankets the chicken, like a little cocoon. So I like I like cold sauce. Okay, let's now figure out how to arrange it. All right, you want symmetry, so you want the like pieces to sort of be together, and then do any final trimming you need to do. All right, so this looks pretty good. So I trim it and then I adjusted it so that it all looks as symmetry. The flavor is absolutely fantastic and completely bite through. I got my cold sauce here. So I'm gonna dip my sauce and then put it back in the pit. Originally I would use the tool called, uh, uh, what do you call it, pigtail, but I can't find my pigtail today for some reason. Cold sauce sticks better. Absolutely gorgeous chicken here. And then uh, if there's any little bits or pieces of uh, spice, I just take it out before I plate it. Your choice of sauce is up to you. I'm editing my video of my, my shootout of 15 curated barbecue sauces on the comp circuit that I did. 
I had uh, four massive judges eat it and we're gonna show you guys the results of that video shortly. Hopefully that video comes out soon. I'm getting rid of some of the doodads here. I don't like, I don't like any of those little stuff floating around. All right, so that's good enough for a practice run here in my backyard. So we're gonna put it back on the pit, set, set for a few minutes. Now I put it back in the same order on the tray, okay? So that when I have carefully, painstakingly measured it and arranged it properly, did my Jenga, I'm sorry, did my Tetris on it, uh, the pieces are all perfectly aligned. So I, I want to really get them back in the same order so that this is how it will go into the box, right? There you go. So beautiful chicken, hopefully good enough for first place. Sauce is set. And remove it now. There you go. Chicken ready. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful sheen, beautiful shine. I'll let it rest for a minute and then do a taste test. All right, so I have some Slap Your Daddy chicken rub here and I ground it in a spice grinder, a coffee grinder. So I'm gonna just apply a final finishing touch on it. Looks like so. Just a final touch of flavor. And then a little bit of pop at the end with some cayenne to let the flavors pop in the judge's mouth. Just a little bit, okay, not too much. So I'll shake it here first, get the hang of it. And do this very carefully, okay? So do not uh, apply too much. And then the last trick is uh, some spray water. That way it removes the blemishes of the products that you put on in the final seasoning. So there you go. Ultimate barbecue competition chicken. You can do this in a contest, take plenty of walks, go up to the station, get the $10,000 check. The doing so backyard, uh, you can definitely do it for your friends and family and blow them away with some slap your daddy chicken. The key is to have good technique, good control of your products, your pit, your temperature, your injection, your rub, your smoke, your wood, your trim. So there you go. Beautiful slap your daddy chicken. Thank you guys for coming by. I'm going to do a taste test shortly. Final taste test of uh, slap your daddy ultimate chicken all of the techniques and tips from the past six videos. Take a bite of that. Perfect bite too. Tender, a little bit smoky, perfect amount of salt, perfect amount of heat, a little bit of tang, but a sauce mixture that I, I'm gonna give you the recipe of how I make the sauce using the Celebrity Daddy Championship sauce. So excellent chicken. Um, if you can replicate this in your backyard or in a contest, I think you'll take a walk that day. Definitely a top 10, top maybe top five chicken in a large contest. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share and remember when Harry ups his game learns his lesson he teach you what he knows and you too can up your game let's all spread some barbecue love in the world make sure that we focus on important things in life winning trophies and winning grand championships and doing well in contests are important but what's more important is spreading love receiving love relationships and memories because those are eternal to the next video we'll see you around take care <laughs>